Good morning and welcome to Introduction to Dental Anatomy. This course will be given by me, Dr. Hiba Alzer and Dr. Firas Slehat. In the beginning, I would like to take you through the uh, outline of the material. This uh, course is accredited for one hour. And this course delineates presentation of dental macro and micromorphology and evidence-based chronologies of the human dentition while reflecting definitive shifts in modern dental practice. Aims of this course are to illustrate evidence-based chronologies of the human dentitions that provide research standards for tooth development and eruption, detailed descriptions of dimensions of teeth from all aspects in relation to space problems and arch size will be explained, Detail, detailed descriptions and illustrated morphologic features of usual and unusual teeth will be demonstrated for you, demonstrations on radiographs and pouch chamber and canal morphology in section teeth that provide an excellent reference for root canal uh, therapy. Clinically useful chronologies show the age of attainment to avoid damage to developing teeth. E age prediction chronologies can be used to assess the unknown age of patient. Outlining the relationship of tooth morphology to the periodontium and expanded coverage of the development process of the primary and permanent dentition related to, to diagnosing potential space problems and malocclusion. Essential concepts of occlusion relevant to restorative, restorative dentistry. At the end of this course, you are expected to be able to discuss and explain chronology, descriptive morphology, and anatomy of each type of tooth, be able to make a distinction between permanent and deciduous teeth from one side and among the permanent dentition from other side. You should be able to identify and differentiate each type of tooth and employ definitive shifts in modern dental practice. You should be able to communicate with the instructors, peers and patients using understandable terminology and sketches when appropriate and to describe the relationship of vital nerves and blood supply of the pulp to tooth morphology and function. In this course, you will be given 14 lectures. This is the first one of them, which will introduce you to uh, nomenclature of teeth, which means different terms and names and uh, systems we use to describe teeth and name them. Next week, we will be talking about anatomy of tooth and crown and the landmarks we use to communicate with each other and with other dentists. Afterwards, we will be describing each permanent tooth in details. So we will talk about the permanent maxillary incisors, the permanent mandibular incisors, the permanent mag maxillary and mandibular canines. Maxillary means upper jaw, mandibular means lower jaw. The permanent maxillary premolars, the permanent mandibular premolars, the permanent maxillary molars, and finally the permanent mandibular molars. Afterwards, you will be introduced to deciduous dentition, the chronology, the morphology, and the occlusion. Then you will be uh, introduced into occlusion of, of permanent teeth into uh, lectures. Finally, the physiology of permanent dentition and the development and growth of teeth will be given into lectures. You are expected to attend all lectures. If your absence limit exceeds 15%, you will be taken out of the course. You have two exams, a midterm exam, which gives 40% of the final grade, and a final exam, 
which is 60% of the final grade. The reference book is Wheeler, Dental Anatomy, Physiology and Occlusion, the 9th edition. Among other recommended books that is in the outline, the outline will be um, handed out to you. And now we can start our introduction. To start with, we should know that a human dentition is a diphyodont dentition. Di means two, and this word diphyodont means that humans have two sets of dentitions a primary or a deciduous one, and a secondary or a permanent one that replaces the deciduous or the primary set. The primary uh, set is, uh, contains 20 teeth in total, which have incisors, canines, and molars. We will see them in the next picture. They are smaller in size. The secondary, uh, the secondary dentition has 32 teeth in total and they are bigger in size. In the deciduous dentition, we have three classes of teeth, the incisors, the canines, and the premolars. In the permanent or secondary dentition, in, in addition to these classes, we have three molars. As you can see, this is primary dentition. They are smaller and have spaces in between them. We will discuss them in detail later on. Incisors. And the permanent dentition, which are bigger and more, uh, uh, actually there is 32 of them. They accommodate to the bigger size of skull and jaws in the adult and they accommodate also for heavier function of adult jaws. We use a dental formula to describe the number and class of teeth that is found in the oral cavity of different species. For this formula, we use numbers and letters. For example, we describe incisors by the letter I, canines with the letter C, premolars with the letter, uh, letters PM and molars with the letter M. And if there is a deciduous dentition like in humans, we use the letter D before any of these letters. For example, the human dental formula for deciduous teeth is D before all of the letters. I, which means incisors, we have two incisors in the upper uh, jaw on one half of the upper jaw and two incisors in the lower jaw one half of the lower jaw because the numbers here refer to the number of teeth of each type or class in the upper and then the lower dentition for one side only so let's go back to the deciduous for formula we have deciduous canine one upper one lower each side we have two molars upper and lower each side which gives us ten teeth on upper and lower right or left halves of the jaw. For the permanent teeth, we have two upper, two lower incisors, one upper, one lower canine, two upper and lower molars, three upper and three lower molars, which gives us 16 teeth upper and lower on each and right or left halves of the jaw. Also, we can divide the jaws into quadrants. We have four quadrants, the right maxillary, which is given the number one or five. I will go, come back to the uh, numbers later on in this lecture. The left maxillary, the left mandibular, and the right mandibular. As you can see here, this is the deciduous dentition and this is the permanent dentition. As you, you can see the difference in size and number. In the deciduous dentition, there is two incisors, upper and lower, in each half of the jaw, one canine, 
and two molars. While in the permanent dentition, we have two, mo two uh, incisors, one canine, two premolar, and three molars in each quadrant. So dental uh, nomenclature is the way we can actually name the tooth. We use either words or numbers, letters, and symbols. For example, when we use words to describe a tooth, we have to imply in which set is this tooth, which means is it deciduous or permanent. We should imply with in which jaw does this tooth locate. Is it a maxillary, which means it locates in the upper jaw, or a mandibular tooth, which means it locates in the lower jaw. Also, we should imply the class. Is it an incisor, a canine, a premolar, or a molar? And we should specify the order this tooth has within a class. Because, for example, we have a central incisor and a lateral incisor. We have a first and a second premolar. And we have a first, second, and third molars in the permanent dentition. Finally, we have to imply the side. Is it a right or a left tooth? Instead of using all of these words to describe one tooth, we can use one of the notation systems that use numbers, letters, and symbols to describe the tooth. So, we have the Palmer notation system, the universal numbering system, and the FDI numbering system. The Palmer or Sigmundi notation system used by the American Dental Association and is, it's actually the one used here in Jordan. It uses let letters to represent the deciduous teeth and numbers to represent the permanent teeth. In this system, we use a horizontal line representing the occlusive plane or in other meaning, divide the maxillary from the mandibular jaws, upper and lower. And we use a vertical line to divide right from left. In the deciduous teeth, we use letters from A to represent the central incisor, going B, C, D till we reach E to represent the second molar. It's the same in all quadrants, the same letters in all quadrants, because we use the lines, the vertical and the horizontal line, to indicate the arch and the side. For example, this here, when you write this for your colleague, he will know that we are talking about maxillary, right, maxillary permanent right central incisor. And if you write this for your colleague, he or she will know that we are talking about mandibular permanent left second, uh, sorry, mandibular left second deciduous molar. As you can see here in the permanent edition, we start with the number 1 for central incisor, going back till we reach 8 for the third molar. But what if you are writing a letter to a colleague of you using the computer? You can't write vertical and horizontal lines for your colleague using the keyboard. That's why we can use the universal numbering system or the FDI numbering system to do so. In the universal numbering system, we use consecutive uh, letters and numbers to indicate teeth. In that way, each tooth has a specific letter or number to indicate it that cannot be replaced by other letter or number. In the deciduous teeth, we start with the letter A to indicate third, uh, mags, third mo uh, sorry, the second molar of upper maxillary, then we go clockwise to end with T for the second molar on the mandibular right side. For the permanent dentition, we start with the one for the third molar of upper right jaw, and we go clockwise to end with the number 32 for the third molar of the 
mandibular right quadrant. For the FDI system, we use a specific number for each quadrant of the jaw. For example, in the deciduous teeth, we use the number 5 to indicate the maxillary right quadrant, 6 for the maxillary left, 7 for the mandibular left, and 8 for the mandibular right. Next to this number, the right to it, we write the numbers that indicate the teeth from 1 to 5. So 1 here is a central incisor and then we go to end with 5 indicating the second molar. In the permanent dentition, the quadrants are given the number 1, 2, 3 and 4 and teeth are given numbers from 1 till 8. 8 is the third molar, 1 is the central incisor. So, for example, when you write 4, 3, 4 indicates that we are in the permanent dentition, actually, in the uh, mandibular right side. And 3 indicates that we are talking about a canine. 6, 2 will indicate that we are here, 6, in the maxillary left deciduous uh, quadrant and 2 will indicate that we are, are talking about a lateral incisor. Types of dentitions. We have uh, different terms to describe types of dentitions. For example, when we say diphyodont, I think we described that at the beginning of the lecture, we are referring to most mammals as humans that actually have two generations of teeth. The monophyodont, like some mammals, like manat, seals, uh, walruses, have only a single generation of teeth. Polyphyodont, like most reptiles and fishes, develop a lifetime of generations of successional teeth. Such teeth have a brief functional life and are anatomically simple in design. Homodont, in many vertebrates, all of the teeth, teeth in the jaws are alike. They differ from each other only in size. For example, alligator. Heterodont, most mammals, humans included, they develop distinctive classes of teeth that are regionally specialized. We will discuss the classes of teeth in next lectures. Anodontia is the developmental absence of teeth. Among mammals, we can mention the whale bone whale and the anteater. They are toothless. The, uh, in humans, anodontia is a pathological condition. Sometimes we can see partial anodontia, which is the absence of one or few teeth. That will be uh, all for today. Next week, we will be talking about uh, teeth landmarks that we use to communicate with each other and with other dentists. For now, I wish you all the best.